Tonight we're going to move right into the gospel reading itself without any hesitation or delay. Now, the gospel comes out of the 20th chapter of John, verses 19 to 31. And Thomas, one of the original 12 disciples in tonight's gospel reading, he makes two mistakes. And he makes both of these mistakes at the same time. But before we get to the verses in which we're going to highlight and notice the mistakes that Thomas makes, we just have to kind of bring us up to those locations before we take a look at them. Now, at the very beginning of the gospel is the evening of the first day of the week. That's a reference to Sunday night. That Sunday morning, Jesus Christ resurrected. Sunday night, the disciples of Jesus are gathered together. The doors are locked, and despite those locked doors, Jesus stands in their presence and said to them, Peace be with you. Now, right after that, shortly after that, Jesus Christ leaves. All the disciples are together, all except Thomas is the only disciple not there when Jesus Christ appears after resurrecting Easter Sunday morning. So once Jesus Christ leaves, Thomas appears. And they tell Thomas what had taken place. What happened? Now let's take a look at verse 24 and 25 to see the response of Thomas. Take a look. Now right there at the very beginning where it says Thomas called Didymus. So we're going to stop right there for a second. The word Thomas is a Hebrew word which means twin. Thomas was a twin. Now it says he was also called Didymus. Now, Didymus is the Greek word that also means twin. So it's really the same, the same idea. Thomas was a twin. Some people called him the twin. Some people called him Thomas. Some called him Didymus. But it all comes out to the same. He's a twin. So Thomas called Didymus a twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, when Thomas arrives, we have seen the Lord. And take a look at his response. He says, but he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger to the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now at that point, Thomas makes two mistakes. The first one, I think, seems pretty obvious. What was the mistake that Thomas made? Any idea? Well, he was late. That was definitely a mistake. Thomas was late. He wasn't there. He should have been there, but he wasn't. And it never says what he was doing. I'm not sure what he was up to, but, but what was the mistake right here? He would not believe. He says, I will not believe. Now, this is one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. But Thomas was just a man as all the disciples were. But the other 11 were there. They actually saw Jesus Christ. Thomas wasn't. So Thomas was unbelieving. Now, that's mistake number one. But the second mistake isn't as obvious as that first mistake that says, I will not believe. You see, what happened is Thomas missed a golden opportunity to enjoy the joy of the resurrection of Christ. Instead of saying, hey, this is fabulous news. This man, this Jesus Christ, we know he was crucified on Friday and he resurrected, so we were told Easter Sunday morning, and now he's back with us. He should have been exuberant and excited, but he wasn't. He squelched his, the opportunity for joy. How often in life, when we should be excited about something that's happened to us, an opportunity, we're not excited. We delay opportunities, the excitement that opportunities should bring us. You know, opportunity is a powerful, powerful word because literally translated, opportunity means when a door opens in your life. When a new door opens in your life, you should be excited. I can't wait to walk through that door. But Thomas wasn't. He delayed opportunity. We're going to watch a little video by a man called Matthew Kelly, a Catholic actually from Australia. But this man brings out the idea that how important it is to enjoy opportunity, not to delay the joy opportunity brings to you and I. Now, let, let's take a look. There were a lot of banned words in the Kelly house growing up in Sydney, Australia. Me and my seven brothers. Hate was one of them. It was a word that just was not acceptable to be used. It was, you just, my mother and my father just did not tolerate the use of the word hate. Uh, and there were, there were a few of them, maybe half a dozen of them. And so, um, so hate hasn't mm, played a role really uh, 
in my life or in my vocabulary. Um, but there is one thing I hate, and that is um, waking up to an alarm clock. It's like, it's disturbing. It's, um, it's, it's alarming. I mean, who ever came up with the idea? Uh, not to mention the name. You know, I, in the book I talk about um, alarm suggests fright, fear, chaos, confusion, and looming catastrophe. Well, that's a great way to start the day, isn't it? I hate waking up to alarm clock. So I renamed it. <laughs> it's, a, it's an opportunity clock. Now, the alarm clock goes off every day. It's an opportunity clock. And in many ways, that's our first moment of victory or failure in the day. It's, it's the first moment of freedom or slavery. You know, because how often do we just slap the snooze button? You know? And we just had our first failure of the day. But every morning, that opportunity clock goes off, you got another day. You got another day. And there's a lot of people that don't. So when that opportunity clock goes off each morning, we should be bounding out of bed, ready to go out into the world, to love, to give, to serve and to spread the contagious joy that God is constantly trying to fill our hearts with through every aspect of our spirituality. I hope you never, ever wake up to an alarm clock ever again. Thomas, in today's gospel reading, made a really big mistake. He failed to enjoy the opportunity of the resurrection of Christ. And Matthew Kelly is exactly right that opportunities in life, they're, they're great gifts. They're moments of joy. I would have to say he's right. You know, tomorrow morning, when you're not alarm clock, but rename it, I think he's correct. When your opportunity clock goes off, spring out of bed and say, great, I'm alive, I can enjoy this day. We don't get many opportunities in life to enjoy things that are right in front of us, but when we seal off opportunity, what a tragic mistake we have made. So hopefully when you crawl in bed at night and you set your opportunity clock, when that thing goes off tomorrow morning, no matter what time you have it set for, jump out and say thank you, God, for this opportunity to live another day.